I don't know about you, but I've always spent time wondering what makes a person more likely to get a job offer? What is it that really impresses employers? I decided to put this question to two recruitment experts. Lindsay Rowe, Chief of Staff, COO, and Head of People and Programs at Global Software Specialist, SAP, and Michelle Ruddle, Recruitment Marketing Manager at leading international law firm, Hogan Lovells. I started by asking Lindsay what kind of candidates impress her the most, and why? Ones that do their research. And that's not just for graduates, that's just anybody. I think if you're going to uh, engage with an organisation or just a person in general, if you're going to have a meeting or an interview, do your research. It, it's really important to have that credibility and to build the rapport. So research for me is crucial. Okay, so Lindsay identifies research as a key component to building a connection to an employer. And to help us understand why, let's play a game. I want you to think of a time you felt great meeting a new person. I want you to reflect on what they did to make you feel that way. Was it that they were funny? Did they give you undivided attention? Did they make you feel accepted? Or maybe it was a combination of things. See, organisations are no different. They're staffed by people motivated to get their organisation noticed and for it to be appreciated for what it does. Good research tells you what's most important to that organisation, giving you a pivot point from which to then articulate a connection by sharing your own correlating experience or values. Lindsay talks about how you might do this. Companies, what they'll do is it's an opportunity for them to present their, you know, their best foot forward in their annual report. Even just going on Google News or, or whatever it might be, and just typing the company name in, you'll get a bit of an idea. And then try and link it to something that you are passionate about yourself. So for SAP, we've got a lot of purpose topics. So there's lots of work that we do around improving people's lives, around how we use our technology. Then people say, actually, whilst at university, working on a sustainability project, and I was really interested to see the SAP are also passionate about that. Lindsay describes this pivot point concept perfectly, using research materials like annual and quarterly reports, news alerts or presentations uploaded to YouTube to find points that you and the organisation have in common so that you can then articulate that in application forms and interviews to show how you fit. Now it's time for a written example to really bring this to life. Let's say you catch a talk by an engineering firm on YouTube where they talk about reducing congestion in New York subway. This could potentially lead to building a connection like this. I was excited to learn of Arup's work in New York, most notably your collaboration with ACOM in reducing congestion across Manhattan's east side by 13% via your redesign of the 2nd Avenue subway. There's a parallel with computational modelling I'm currently undertaking using TFL's travel time mapping data to model and cost different measures to cut congestion. You see how it works, right? First you're acknowledging something they're publicly showing off and proud of themselves, rightly so, and you're weaving yourself into that narrative by articulating your value in that context. Now you might be thinking, well Raj, what if I can't find anything to connect to? Well I would say, in all my years of working with clients, I've yet to come across one who couldn't find something to connect to. And you can even use a skill as that pivot point, right? So taking, for example, attention to detail, you might say, I noticed that your quarterly report celebrated a cost saving of 8% in your Malaysian production line through using just-in-time stock ordering. And this attention to detail echoes my own, whereupon I used optimization analysis to increase turbine blade efficiency by 4% in my final year engineering project. Now, it doesn't have to be flashy, it just has to connect. Let's now hear from Michelle about what impresses her the most. We really want to see candidates who are very interested in the firm, and that interest comes from, I guess, a history of getting to know us as an organisation, and that is through looking at different sources, talking to different people. You can find out, you know, any students at UCL who may have done a VAC scheme with us, or maybe they've seen us on campus, you know, chat to those people because they will also be able to give you some quite honest views and then you can hopefully weave that into your preparation, not just picking up the newspaper or looking at something virtually on the day of an assessment or an interview and just thinking, okay, yes, Hogan Lovell's done X, Y, Z, 
I'm going to talk about that during my interview. So having that sincerity, which I think comes from solid research about the organisation. Solid research builds credibility and I couldn't agree more with Michelle. And referencing conversations you've had with people in that organisation is perhaps the most powerful type of research. Michelle is also impressed by candidates who, in quotes, have a history of getting to know us. And this implies a longevity and sincerity in their interest. You can build this up over time by interacting on social media and attending events, whether online or in person, where that organisation may be sharing news or running virtual skill sessions. This all serves to show long-standing and sincere interest. By the way, are you surprised that Michelle and Lindsay choose exactly the same thing to talk about when discussing candidates who impress them the most? I'm not. We are a social species and we connect through things that we have in common. And this matters in recruitment the same way it matters in any other type of relationship. Enormous thanks to both Michelle and Lindsay for sharing their expertise on a topic that I think we're all curious about, right? If you'd like to comment on anything you've heard, love to see that in the comment section down below. And if you'd like a question that you have around careers to feature in a future Q&A episode, then definitely email me at careers.marketing at ucl.ac.uk. That's it from me for this week. I'll see you next time.